picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. Well, good morning and hello and welcome back to week five. Five of the epic saga of the Star Destroyer. And um, we're going to get this thing closed up this week. I know it. I feel it in my bones. Um, and to do that, i got to start making some permanent decisions, which is something, you know, I don't have this thing all thought out. I'm kind of going at, you know, taking it as it comes. But i got to make some permanent decisions about how it's going to be wired, how it's going to be displayed, things like that. So uh, what I did when I was digging through and cleaning out stuff this weekend is I found this old switch. This old switch that I've had forever that I got from Osnium. Dot com. That's so, I uh, may put the address right here. But it's a remote switch, and I've never used remote switches in my stuff before. I've just thought that it's like, you know, the next step in lighting stuff is uh, remote switches. But you need to have a goodly amount of space to put the circuit board in. Well, this is the first kit that I've built in quite a while that has afforded me this goodly amount of space. This is the circuit now. It's huge. I'm sure you can do this with much smaller stuff. But um, I like my I like my electronics very simple, and this was a plug and play basically uh, uh, package from Osnium. The only thing I've done is take it out of the box because the box was even bigger. It's meant to go in a car for something, um, so it's got you know heavy duty wiring on it, and it's made to go on a 12 volt circuit. I'm not using a 12 volt circuit. I'm using nine volts on uh, on the storage drawer, but it still works. It's just a switch. So what I decided to do is put the switch in the Star Destroyer so that I could walk into the room and go beep beep and the Star Destroyer lights up and I don't have to worry about hiding a switch on this thing, which is the second thing. You either have to put your kit on a stand, run the wiring down through the stand and out the back and put a switch either on the kit or on the stand somehow. Well, this eliminates the switch problem. I can bury the circuit board on the kit in board and not have to worry about that. At least, you know, fingers crossed. It's the first time I've ever used anything like this. And the other thing is, where do I run the power out? Well, this is this is the kit. This is the guy. And anything that means running a cord out of this, it's obvious I can't run power internally because then I have to make a battery hatch for it. I have to make some way of getting in and out to get to the batteries. And frankly, once I've got this guy closed up, I don't want to have to touch it. I don't want to have to go in for maintenance. I don't want to have to, you know, make a, make a door in it that I have to go in and change batteries and stuff like that. Uh, because these guys are gonna, they're fairly delicate and I just don't want to have to uh, worry about uh, touching them when, once they're done. So, uh, I, there was a commenter on one of my videos, and yes, I do read all the comments because I'm a lonely man, uh, but they had uh, a person whose name I'm not remembering right now, and, I, and I'm sorry about that, um, suggested putting a plug in here that was a magnetic cover that I could uh, cover over when I was not using the power so I could pick it up off the cradle and do all the zooming around that I wanted to do, but then I could take that cover off and stick the plug in. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I've decided that's what I'm going to do, and yay for that uh, for that very good uh, suggestion. So let's get down onto the table, and I'll show you what where the what the what is. Okay, here is our patient light out on the the table, and this is obviously the bottom half of the ship, and I am going to be tying the top and bottom halves together this week. Um, but first, I want to make sure I'm done with everything that has to be done on the bottom half. And that includes hiding the circuit board for the switch and the power jack. Uh, I've decided the power board is going to live right here. I have all of this nice space. I have some of this reserved because I have to run fibers from the top through these holes. And not having to put this on some sort of uh, post to uh, display it also helps in the fact that I don't have to worry about trying to run a, pole, you know, a support pole through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the board here, roughly. I'm going to, obviously, you're going to, have to cut some of this wiring down because it's way too long. But what I'm going to do here is here's the power jack that uh, is eventually going to run. I'm going to run it into this port right here. 
uh, frankly, it's the best for, um, it, it makes the least amount of cosmetic impact, but it also is the, uh, I, anything fur, further, further front of this, anything towards the bow of this, you, you start running out of real estate. This is a diminishing point to get down to here. And then the further you get to the back, the more interior volume you have. So this is really the first practical place that I can uh, put this jack. And what I'm going to do is nip these three fibers that are going to, that, are, that would be lighting these uh, windows right here. That's gone. That's going to be gone. And then I'm going to cut this part out, this doorway part out. I'm afraid, um, I don't know whether I could pull it out. I'm sorry I glued it in right now because, like I said, I wasn't thinking ahead. And uh, if I was thinking ahead, I would not have, never have glued that piece in. But so now I need to try to chip it out. And then I'm going to bury this uh, female plug right into the uh, interior there with some epoxy putty to hold it in place. And here is, see if I can find it. Let me, ooh, here it comes. This is the plug that I'm going to use. So it's going to end up plugging in something like that. Which, when I put it on the shelf like this that sits on a shelf this is against the wall this side is against the wall that plug is a minimal impact it makes no makes no uh, cosmetic impact on the bottom of the ship or on the top it is buried on that one little side jack there and when i'm not using it i'm hoping to say salvage this part to where i can build that into a plug that i can use um, to plug that hole when i am not using the power jack but that's, that's the goal for this morning. And then, once all that's in place and these two power wires, this is, this is my main power going out to all of the lights, then um, I can marry the top to the bottom. And then all I'll have is this big hole here where the tower goes. So uh, let's get on to some deconstruction here and some construction there. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. I must be living right today because... I put the little flat exacto in behind there, gave a little tug, and it came out perfect. Wonderful. Now I'll just clean this up and save it for later because that's going to be the plug that goes back in there. Now I can uh, gnaw that out and uh, get ready to put that plug in behind it. Okay, a first, a rudimentary uh, demonstration. There you go. See? Off. And off. And... That's simply running onto temporary wires for right now, but my ability to do that, let me see how far away I can get from it. And yeah, it still works. And yes, the range is nice. Okay, so now that we know that that works, it's time to bury it in there. Okay, things are setting up. Wiring is in, circuit board is in, uh, wiring is temporary to this point. The jack is in, and uh, the epoxy, uh, the metal epoxy around it has uh, set up. And with a quick plug in here, and the hardy high ho silver of hitting the remote. Boom, shakalaka, we've got lights. And yes, those lights look bluish purple. They are cool white. For some reason, the camera really errs towards the blue spectrum on this. But uh, off, on, off, on. And the windows are down along the perimeter. And this plug has been flattened. I've sanded uh, the casing down a bit. With the Dremel uh, and when I uh, put this little plug back in place I'm going to put a magnet or something behind it to hide it it fools the eye completely now I'm going to leave this running for a while and then come back to it later because I want to make sure everything continues to work before I get ready to seal it up okay here's a top side view you haven't seen in a while because I was charging the battery up but I've got the top put on the bottom. Yes, I'm sorry you had to miss that, but um, 
I needed all hands on deck and a lot of concentration, so I did not film it. Um, it's not glued down. It's uh, I've tried to uh, work the, the uh, fiber optics in place, and I am down to just this last bundle as far as getting it, getting a bulb put on it. And then it'll be a question of pulling the top half down and securing it. Uh, I've got, I don't know whether you can see it in here, this was the sticking point. I needed to make sure that this bundle came out uh, through this uh, reinforcing structure here. I need this end, I need this top part of this uh, support structure to be uh, clean so that I can glue it down, use that as a gluing surface. Now I am going to have to uh, pry apart the edges and throw some glue in there and then squeeze it back down very carefully. I cannot use CA in that because of the close proximity of all of the fiber optics and even the fumes from CA can adversely affect fiber optics. So um, what I'm gonna do is very slowly do it section by section uh, with white tulip. Not black tulip, but white tulip, which is give me that same light blocking. But if it squeezes out somewhere, it'll be white and not nearly as uh, bad for everything as if it were black. Um, so I'm going to uh, open these seams up, squirt that in, and then just go to town with all the clamps that I have. That's not, we're not quite there yet. Uh, what I've got to do first, turn this around, what I've got to do first and these uh, little stands that the kit comes with are coming in pra very practical for this. Let's see, we're done with those. We're pretty much done with all of these. I'm cleaning up as I go, but um, here is my docking port. There's the power, and I've got to squeeze those holes together there and uh, glue that down. Where we run to the outside edge, I can put a little bit of... CA there because we're not near the fiber optics like you would be if I was doing it from the trying to apply glue from the inside um, And then hopefully these lay down as it comes time to put the tower on uh, But let's see I've got This one last section of two of, of fibers to CA and put a light on it. So let's do that Okay, it is Monday evening, and I think we've gotten to a place Yes, look at all the ugly, look at all the ugly uh, fiber optic bundles sticking out of the top there. But we're to a place now where I can do this. And all the windows, come on. Uh, not too bad. Now, of course, I start here's where I start listing all the shortcomings. Uh, the top is not on. Um... These, the top and bottom of the hull are not glued together yet, but I've got a plan for that. And I've got a plan for attaching this. And all that's going to happen tomorrow. But, as you can see, we've got windows all along the watchtower there, and we are good to go. Good enough for one day's work, I'll tell you. Getting this thing in was the neat part. And off we go. Good morning, everybody. It's the happiest season of all. It's uh, Tuesday, and uh, not a lot I can do. I mean, there's one big thing I can do today, and that is to, uh, to seal the top and bottom of the Star Destroyer together. And then once I do that, then I have to leave the whole thing alone because it's going to take a day... Uh, at least I want to leave it overnight to dry. I'm going to have to use a combination of adhesives. Uh, I don't want to get CA anywhere near any uh, fiber optics. The only place I might be able to use CA is on this back edge of the engines. Because it's nowhere near any uh, exposed CA. But the rest of it's going to have to be done with combinations of the uh, 10X and... Uh, tulip slick so uh, that's what I'm gonna be doing today and I'm gonna be getting every clamp I have in the house out to clamp it all around the sides so uh, also uh, this is the time of year when everything is just happening all at once I've got an order to plot so plotters are gonna be uh, plotting all day and that's gonna be making noise so the next time you see this we'll probably have a gigantic amount of uh, 
clamps around it. So I took advantage of a quiet moment to uh, to record this little bit. And uh, like I said, next time you see this, it'll be Clamp City. Okay, we've got the back has been uh, glued in, and the the uh, port side, I guess, is uh, glued and taped and allowing to dry. Uh, figured I could do them side by side or side at a time rather than trying to uh, uh, force the whole thing down. But I still need to uh, get the other side in and pull this tight right in here and glue that down real good and then uh, we'll be ready to add the final lights and attach the tower. And that's all she takes. And then it's down to uh, painting. Okay, as promised, but instead of clamps, I just used a lot of tape. Um, but here is the Star Destroyer with the edges all taped down. And there's, uh, once this dries, there's that one bit under the, under the uh, bridge there that needs to be pulled together and glued. Welcome, welcome. It is Wednesday, and I feel like that point in the movie of the mummy where they get ready to take the bandage, bandages off to see uh, what we've got underneath. And that's really the next step. This has been drying all night. So let's take the tape off and assess where we are. Oh, and this little clamp here that was used to pull the uh, frame together with the hull. Well, it's free of its blue tape bandages, and the good news is there was no snap, crackle, or pop as I was taking everything off. Sometimes, no matter how much pressure you put on something and glue it, when you take the tape off and relieve the pressure on it, it snaps back to where it wants to be. And none of that has happened, so I'm taking that as a great and positive sign. So what I need to do now is finish up the last bit of construction and to do that I've got to put this one last bulb in here and then tie the, t the tower in and glue that down and that's going to be the job for this morning I don't know how long it's going to take for that to set up but I really want to make sure it's uh, good and tight as the Germans say so uh, um, that'll be the next step let's take care of that there you go towers on lights are lit little bit of squeezage still needing there I, uh, now I'm going around and pointing up and puttying in cracks and taking care of some stuff like that and there's one crack there that I need to putty in so that's why that is that clamp is there I've got a mix of warm and cool uh, LEDs and it's uh, giving me results like will grow to love but right now it's a little bit jarring that section in front of the nose there is all warm whites and those are all cool whites and um, it is quite different and of course there are all the lights in the back but uh, what you guys want to see are those ones you want to see the perimeter lights going down the nose very good very good and then of course the uh, lights up by the bridge okay now um, a word of warning, I have to now go back in and paint. Uh, I'll be putting a lot of paint on this. And then after the painting is done, I will be taking the opportunity to either nip, if these bulbs are, are nice, or the fibers are nicely secured, I may go in and nip the uh, buds off of them to uh, keep them from sticking out and, or sticking out too much. And that's going to probably disperse the light a little bit better, but... Uh, lots and lots of progress for one day and look at this I can turn the lights off remotely that is just neat um, there you go well hello and welcome back it is Thursday and we have gotten to that important point in the build where the weather outside whether it be frightful or not is just as an important a factor as anything else and uh, looking at the weather and what it's been doing lately um, I need to take this afternoon, some time this afternoon, to cut out the wooden base that I am making for this. I am, have not started to go back into painting yet because, frankly, I can paint in any weather. But I have to maximize the, uh, the weather outside so that I can 
um, do the things that I can't do in the house. It's as simple as that. Um, so I'm going to go out and cut the, uh, I picked up the MDF from the uh, local big box hardware store. And um, because I don't need it for a couple of other projects, I got a, a bigger piece than I need just for this guy. But I want to go ahead and get that uh, cut out today whilst uh, while the sun's not shining, but whilst it's still warm enough to do so outside. And here's the quick cut out of a uh, piece of MDF with a base coat of black on it. Now I'm going to have to put many coats to get that up to a gloss, but that's at least a primer coat. And it is cut a little bit, maybe a hair smaller than the actual ship, but I'm not, I haven't decided how high up the uh, ship is going to be above the base. I know I'm not going to use the uh, uh, pieces that came with the kit. I'm going to use uh, clear acrylic rod. I just don't know uh, how high up it's going to be. So uh, let me figure that out. Okay, it's Thursday and we're finally starting in the long-awaited painting. And the thing about model building is it does not exist in a vacuum, unlike Star Destroyers. Um, things you learn from one paint job or one kit always carries on into the future. And what I'm carrying on to this job is, uh, this is basically a ship that could, in some circumstances, look all plain white. I mean, boring white. As a matter of fact, these are pictures that I took at the uh, Star Wars Magic of Myth exhibit at the Smithsonian years upon years ago. So old that it's actually a, physically, a physical photo. One with flash and one without flash to show you something. This is with flash, this is without flash, and what a difference lighting can make. Um, this kit, most people look at it and they think of this. This is the look of a Star Destroyer. That, to me, is boring upon boring upon boring, with a little boring on the side. That's just all white, and then they let the camera and the, um, the lighting setups dictate the mood and all of that. Uh, that, to me, is a boring paint job. You might as well just take a big old spray paint can and just go nuts with it and make it all white. Uh, on the other hand, this uh, is too moody, and it's also way too warm. It's not this uh, tan of a color. That is the lighting that, the, that existed in the exhibit without you using a flash. They were figuring a lot of people were going to use a flash. Plus, it's a museum setting where they have a tendency to keep things dark anyway. So, uh, I say that to say this. I just finished up painting that Discovery kit. And the Discovery is, like the Star Destroyer, a kit or a ship that, on first blush, is all white. It is a uh, ship that is white upon white. And, uh, but when you look closer at it, you see, no, it's actually subtle variations of gray. Well, the Star Destroyer actually was white upon white upon white. And uh, which was fine for a full-size model that you were going to light. But for a tinier, much tinier kit, you need to accentuate the, uh, the detail levels by adding more breakups of the grays. You actually want to tone all of that white down because if you painted it all white, it would look like a toy and that's no good. So what I've done here is I'm doing some pre-shading. Uh, I appreciate the pre-shading. It's uh, something that... Uh, I did on the discovery I'm doing here as well. These will not ever end up being this dark, but what I'm doing is putting in big plating uh, detail that I can shade over top of, and by the time I get the final whites on here, you'll see some breakup and it won't look all completely white. But this is how the top is coming out, and I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, this is where we're going to leave it for today. It's been nice and uh, toned in and pre-shaded and uh, tomorrow we'll start doing the uh, the white coats the white coats are coming the white coats are coming tomorrow that is welcome back ladies and germs it is uh, it is Friday and the weathermen were true to their forecast it is cold wet ugly rainy nasty and raw outside so doubly glad I was able to get this thing painted yesterday so, what I'm doing today, one last bit before I do the final white painting on this because it involves a degree of manhandling and I don't want to do that once I start painting the white, is I need to uh, 
put the rods on the base here and what I've decided to do is go with these cut clear uh, acrylic rods something like that and that and then I'm going to put four of them on the base I'm just mapping them out where they need to go now and then I will drill the holes and epoxy them in place and then I have to well before I epoxy them in place I need to sand the the tops of them to match the angle on the top of the brace so that it sits down on it nicely on four pedestals and then I can epoxy everything into place and put felt on the bottom and we little feet if I decide to but uh, uh, I can get that taken care of and then this also gives me a drying spot once I have started to paint the, uh, the, the whites on there so that's what I'm doing now and let's see how fast or how far it goes okay we've got the Star Destroyer sitting on the stand. Now I've got to do some fine tuning. I need to sand the top of these posts to the right correct angle, not the right angle, the correct angle. And I think I'm going to get a little mirror to put on the base on the bottom here to show up some of the detail that's happening on the bottom there. But uh, um, I need to clean that base off, dust it off, maybe give it one top coat of paint before I glue the uh, rods in. Something else I want to do besides cleaning off the fingerprints and whatnot is I want to paint the insides of these holes black. Even though I'm going to put clear epoxy in them there, you can still see the color of the MDF. So I need to, take to uh, focus. I need to take care of that. And these are kind of loose, and uh, that coat of paint I think is actually going to help uh, snug these up a little bit. But now I need to uh, get the sander out and sand the tops of these posts. I hate to do it, but I'm going to have to. Uh, I've got the holes painted. Uh, I painted those in with the ever-present slick and uh, sanded this down, but I have to have to call the top coat on account of rain. It's just too wet and cold and, and uh, humid and muggy. Well, not muggy. That's usually heat. Uh, it's, too, uh, it's too wet and cold outside to get a good coat for this to dry. So I'm going to let this sit and take care of it over the weekend, and I will show you how it turned out uh, in next week's video but um, I can go ahead and sand the tops of the uh, posts and get those ready so do that next and there you go one last shot before I start painting the white on this but the uh, Star Destroyer is sitting up above its base uh, it may look a little high at this point but by the time I put a little mirror underneath there so that you can see the underside Hopefully that will dispel some of that. Um, not gluing it to the base so that I can pick it up and zoom it around like I have been wanting to do. Uh, so I figured I'd show it off. But what good is showing off uh, without turning on the lights? So there you go. Let me turn off this overhead light so you can get a, a good view of it. There you go. One last look at it before I do the white passes over it. So there's your rear windows and engines view. That side. There you go. Okay, I just went through and hit a white coat on top of this to tone it down. And I uh, plugged in the lights to make sure I'm not covering anything up. Everything looks good on this end. And I'm shying away from areas where the windows are because I've really already painted those. Everything else I can either uh, nip or clean off after I'm done. But uh, getting the uh, whites back in here was, the important, was important to me because those big bells need to be a smooth white shape. But uh, still want to leave some shadow and some shading. And uh, I'll be playing on this probably most of the weekend. I'll be playing on and off with uh, maybe putting in a, a wash coat into the details and then balancing, balancing that out with another uh, top coat. Uh, I still have to put all the little guns on yet. So uh, we're going to continue like this oh, probably all into the weekend depending on the weather. And a pass on the bottom. I find it best to do numerous light passes rather than trying to achieve my whole 
look with one pass. It uh, ends up with gawked paint that way. Uh, I'm going to try to simulate the activity in the bay with paint rather than lighting. Make it look a little bit brighter in there to make up for the fact that there is no lighting in there. So uh, I'm going to let this sit and dry. Probably take my big old thumbprint off of it and then uh, put it on its base for the weekend. But I think that's a good place to leave it. And there's your beauty shot for the week. Sitting on his base. Still some work to be done, but by and large, that's pretty much close to the final product. All we have to do is some nipping and some tucking here and there, which will be done uh, in time for the next video. And I will probably uh, have this complete by... I'll definitely have a complete next week, but uh, I may finish it over the weekend. Who knows? And so that's going to do it for this week. Uh, got a lot done. A lot done off camera that you never even saw because I am waiting to show them and spring them upon, spring them upon you as finished projects. And uh, uh, so that I kind of work on while I'm waiting for paints to dry and things like that. And with the weather turning foul uh, like it has, that means no more big scale painting outside. So I kind of had to maximize the days and the weather while I had it to do the priming and big work on a couple of three different projects down the road so that when the days get short and the nights grow long and the cold winds whip around the willows, I can be working on those knowing that the big priming and stuff has been done. But back to our Death Star, back to our Death Star, please. Back to our Star Destroyer. This guy. Getting it buttoned up, getting the lights working, getting the remote switch in, and then getting it painted. That was a full man's worth of a week there. Pretty darn good. And look at that. Blind you. Blind you. That's the, that's the view you want to see. That's the one you're looking for. Anyway, um... Getting this far along as it did, still have, you know, a few steps left to go before it's all done, but it's getting there. Um, like I said, max maximizing the uh, weather as I could to uh, get the spraying done that I needed to do outside. So uh, when the days are dark and the wind is cold, um, I can work on the small stuff inside. So until next week. As we're getting closer to the uh, holiday season, if you still have your family around you, give them a hug. If, you, if they're out of town, give them a call. If they're off this plane of existence, send up a prayer. Uh, but um, have yourself a great week. Be good. Be good to each other. And we'll see you here next time where we'll be wrapping this, but this, this star up. like. And you know, I might even paint it green and call it my Christmas tree because it's all lit up like a tree and it's tree shaped. But no, I wouldn't paint that green. That would be silly. Um, well, I don't even know where I'm going anymore. I'm just giddy from working. So uh, be good. Be good to each other and we'll see you here next time.